Hello there. I need to make a video about some of the stipulations and corrections uh, about Flux. So with Flux, there's um, a lot of convention involved. And uh, part of that is because we took this formula, F dot the, uh, the, the vector field dotted with our unit normal vector of the curve times ds. Um, we use this definition because, well, for circulation, we dotted it with the unit tangent vector. So it seemed natural that for the, for the flux, we would dot it with the unit normal vector. But then we went ahead, and if you watched my time derivation video, we uh, derived this equation right here for flux, which parameterizes flux in a way that's a little bit simpler um, in terms of time. Now, if you'll remember, one of the assumptions in this, in this, uh, this derivation was we decided, instead of finding the unit normal vector using this equation, uh, the change in the unit tangent with respect to time divided by the magnitude of itself, we decided there's a clever way to do this because we know that the unit tangent vector, like let's say it's here, that the unit normal vector will always be 90 degrees away. But it could be 90 degrees clockwise or counterclockwise, right? So the decision we made to match the format that mathematicians have been using for quite a while now was to rotate it clockwise. So we decided that we were going to rotate clockwise and that the unit normal vector was going to be clockwise from the unit tangent. And uh, if you've taken any physics classes, you know that if we're calculating the flux going out of an enclosed surface, that flux um, that leaves a enclosed surface is positive flux, and uh, field lines that come into the surface is negative flux. So by that definition, if our normal vector is clockwise, if we are traveling this way, so there's our unit tangent vector, well then, there is our unit normal vector, 90 degrees clockwise. And you'll notice that if we take the dot product of the normal vector uh, with the vector field, that we're going to get a positive value. And so this convention does uh, work with the positive negative flux convention. However, if we're going the opposite direction and the unit tangent vector is that direction and we go clockwise, well now we've got a problem because our normal vector is pointing into the shape, thus at a 180 degree angle to the field, uh, to the vector field, that's going to give us negative flux. And by convention, this needs to be positive flux. So it turns out, if you're going to use the clockwise convention to do the time derivation, to get the correct sign of the answer, you must always uh, parameterize your curve in a counterclockwise direction. So that's the way you need to run your calculations. If you run it this way, you will get a negative value, or if it was supposed to be negative, you'll get a, a positive value. Regardless, whatever value you are going to get, if you go clockwise with this method, you're going to get the opposite value. Now, interestingly enough, this convention also screws with the original definition of flux, which is this up here, the, the uh, summation of all f's dots with the unit normal vector uh, times the segment length. So, turns out that the unit normal vector, as we learned how to derive it when talking about parameterized vector curves, is always going to point towards the centripetal acceleration. So what that means is that if you are going in a circle this way, centripetal acceleration is going to be pointing in the center-seeking direction. So using this definition up here, what we end up with is we end up with uh, a convention that breaks the convention of flux. So in other words, if we use this definition for the unit normal, we would end up with negative flux when we were supposed to get positive flux, or vice versa. So the way to fix this is to remember that for the convention, we want the outward facing normal vector, not the centripetal facing normal vector. And so in order to do that, they're 180 degrees separated. So all we have to do is go back to our definition of the unit normal vector, put a minus sign in front of it, and in turn, what that's going to bring over here is a minus sign on the outside of this definition. So you can use this definition, but to follow convention, you must put a negative sign in front of it. Um, it's all a little bit screwy. I'm just figuring this out myself. So uh, hopefully this helps, though. And of course, when we get into Green's theorem and Stokes' theorem, 
counterclockwise is going to be a very important convention because for a lot of these derivations, um, you're going to end up with a value with the opposite sign if you don't follow the convention. So um, I know I learned a lesson figuring out about this convention and hopefully uh, you're watching this video and uh, you'll, you'll no longer have to deal with the negative answers when they're supposed to be positive and vice versa. So I hope you have a great day and I'll uh, see you next video.